Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a hemostat mandala shirt. This shirt is inspired by Patricia Otten who does the Otten Alien Ice Dyes, which are super cool. If you've never seen one of hers, she usually posts things in the process of ice dyeing, which is a group out on Facebook. I'm going to begin by centering the shirt, which is going to go really fast. But down below this video, in the description for the video, is a link to another video which shows how to center a shirt. The purpose for centering a shirt is to get both sides of the front of the shirt right up next to each other and both sides of the back of the shirt right up next to each other. That's going to help keep the front looking more symmetrical and the back looking more symmetrical once the dye is applied to the shirt. To fold the mandala, I'm going to start by using a washable marker and placing a mark on the shirt where I'd like for the center of the mandala to be. I generally like to place the center of the mandala close to about level with the armpits of the shirt. I don't want it to actually be on the center of the shirt. I like it to be a little higher than that. I'm going to place my finger on that mark and fold the hem of the shirt up. Then I'm going to grab the hem of the shirt and fold it back down part way, kind of starting like an airplane type fold. Then I'm going to pinch that seam, lift the shirt up off of the table and fold it in half. Now I'm going to fold each side one more time, making an eight point mandala. I'm placing some 8 inch curved hemostats right at the very end or the center of the mandala at an angle. From here I'm going to place either 10 inch or 12 inch hemostats in pairs on the shirt. I'm going to place the hemostats facing each other with a curved side in. And I'm going to alternate applying hemostats to either side of the shirt. I'm starting with the 10 inch hemostats and once the fabric gets too thick, I'll switch over and start using 12 inch hemostats. I've coated my hemostats in heat shrink tubing which I purchased from either Lowe's or Home Depot. And that's going to help get a better grip on the shirt and it's also going to help keep the hemostats from damaging my fabric. Okay, so I'm going to continue this process until I get out to the end of the shirt. And I'm not going to take the hemostats all the way down to the very, very end of the shirt. You can if you want to, I just chose not to. Then I'm going to place the shirt on top of a metal rack and set it aside for a couple of days and let it dry out completely. I think I get better color saturation on a mandala whenever I apply the dye to a dry shirt. If you want a little bit more information about that topic, I have a blog post out on my website and down below in the description for this video is a link to my website. The vision that I have for this shirt is oranger shades flowing into more pink shades and on into purple shades of dye. So these are the colors that I've chosen and I've made myself an ice barrier around the shirt using my silicone cake molds. I have a link down below in the description for those two. I'm also using some wooden clothespins to keep the cake molds up close to the shirt. Before I begin applying the dye, I'm going to spray the shirt with some soda ash solution which I have in a spray bottle. That's going to help the dye adhere to the shirt. Right at the very end or the center of the mandala, I'm using watermelon from Dharma. Then in one of the sections, I'm going to place deep orange from Dharma. And across from the deep orange, I'm using Citrus Got Real from Dharma. That color was a special muck color that was available in spring of 2022. Now I'm applying 
basic red from Pro Chemical. And I'm going to apply Oxblood Red from Dharma. So I'm hoping that the orange will flow into the red, which is then going to start flowing into the more pink type colors. I forgot to mention that I'm going to incline dye this shirt. So that's what's going to give the dye the movement down the shirt. The next section, I'm going to use Pure Magenta from Dye Spin. Followed by Hot Hibiscus from Dharma. Then in the white section in between these two areas, I'm going to use Raspberry and Razzle Dazzle, which are both Dharma colors. In the two remaining sections, I'm going to use Orchid from Dharma and True Violet from Grateful Dyes. Obviously, I was having a hard time deciding which section to put that orchid in. Then in the remaining white space, I'm going to use True Purple and Royal Purple from Grateful Dyes. My video camera keeps going in and out of focus again. I don't know what that's about. Sometimes it will do that if I have like a fly flying around in my dye space. I'm sorry, I know it's very annoying. I had quite a bit of extra space left at the end, so I went ahead and added some Power Berry from Dharma right in this very end section. I also added another little piece of silicone cake mold just to hold the die on that space. Now I'm going to add a small sprinkle of soda ash over the top and a layer of ice. I have one end of this metal rack down inside of my container, so it's placing the shirt at an incline. It's not a huge incline, but it is at an incline. Which by the way, a shirt doesn't have to be at a really steep incline in order to get the effect of an incline on the shirt. So the die will move down the shirt regardless of the size of the incline. After the first layer of ice melted, I came back and checked it and added a second layer of ice. The layers of ice that I'm adding to this shirt are kind of thin, partially because it's a thicker fold so I don't have a lot of space up above before I get to the top of the cake molds. And the other reason is I've been buying ice at a different place and the ice is a little bit thinner. It's not as big a chunks as what I used to use. So instead of adding one pretty good layer of ice, I'm adding a thinner layer of ice. I came back, added a second thin layer of ice, and I checked the back 
The dye had gone through pretty well to the back side, but there were still a couple areas that had some undissolved dye. So I went ahead and added a third layer of ice and allowed it to melt. I waited about 24 hours after the last layer of ice melted before I washed the shirt out. Part of that time too, I stuck the shirt outside where it was really hot. I did lay a container lid over the top of this container just to keep the shirt out of the direct sunlight. Here's what the shirt looked like just before I began rinsing it. And you can see that the dye has gone through really well to the back side. I started rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I took the hemostats off of the shirt and warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Instead of just continuing to rinse for a long time, I ran some really hot water in my utility sink, added a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and allowed the shirt to soak. When the water cooled off, I changed it out and continued the soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I put the shirt, along with some Dharma's textile detergent, into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. And after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? So, I love this one. I think it turned out looking really cool. It did exactly what I envisioned. The orange ran into the pink, which ran into the purple. Like I said, this is a design that Patricia Otten does all the time and hers turn out looking just spectacular. She uses really cool color combinations. I'm pretty happy with this color combination though. I think that the top orange area where it flowed and moved almost looks like goldfish swimming toward the center. I got pretty good color saturation on the shirt. There's just one space right down at the very, very bottom hem of the shirt where it is colored, but not totally. You're probably not going to notice that just because of where it is on the shirt, but I thought that was kind of odd that there's just one little spot down in that area. I just really love the dye movement on the shirt. If you watch a lot of my videos, you know I'm a real fan of incline ice dyes. There's not a huge amount of color variation in the pink area, but it's enough that it works. It varies enough from the orange and from the purple that it does stand out. I'm going to have to be a little bit more daring though with the next one that I do and try a little bit wilder colors on a shirt together. So I really love the shirt. I think it turned out looking awesome. Why don't you guys drop me some comments down below and let me know what you think. And if you've enjoyed the video and watching me make this mandala, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.